Hello everyone and welcome to my video series regarding the Starship Troopers Terran Command Scenario Editor. In this series I will be showing how to use the Scenario Editor as well as some common trigger use cases to help build your scenarios. To start with an overview of the trigger system in Terran Command, we'll want to load up a new map with the Scenario Editor and then select the Triggers option in the top left. I've gone ahead and dressed up a little mission here where we have some rifle troopers being assaulted by some warrior bugs as well as some tiger bug reinforcements. So we're gonna to wanna to back these guys up. So the trigger system can be daunting at first, but after playing with it, it can be a powerful tool to elevate your scenarios higher than ever. The system is broken out into folders, triggers, and effects and conditions. I highly recommend utilizing folders for your trigger work to keep things organized. Triggers will live within folders, and within triggers is where conditions and effects will live. Aside from using folders to organize your work, triggers and effects are the bulk of the magic with the trigger system. To delete any folder, trigger, condition, or effect, press the trash can button. Be warned, if you delete a folder, all triggers and effects within that folder will be, will be deleted. Let's start off with something simple spawning a squad of rocket troopers to support our units already placed on the map. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. And then I'm going to name this folder something simple. You can call it anything you like, but for this purpose, I'm going to call it spawn rocket squad. I'm then going to click my folder and then create a new trigger. I'm going to name this something different just to make sure it doesn't get confused with anything. So I'm going to call this Rocket Squad arrives. That should be sufficient. Now that we have our trigger, we can talk about some of the options here with the triggers themselves. We have the gear icon to the left of the trigger. This allows you to collapse and expand a trigger to keep things tidy. Next, we have the check mark next to both the trigger and the folder. The check mark near the trigger determines if the trigger is active or not at the start of the mission. The check mark next to the folder determines if it is active or not at the start of the mission. And this affects all the triggers within the folder as well. Disabling a folder will not allow any triggers within that folder to actually trigger, even if the trigger is already enabled. This is great for some advanced trigger work later on. Now we have the on functions. The most common on functions you'll be using is either on tick or on init. On tick will have the trigger check to see if the conditions are met every game tick. This is useful if you want to have a trigger where the player has to do something like move a unit to a specific spot, wait a certain amount of time, etc. And you want the trigger system to constantly check if the player has done that action. On init, will have the trigger initialize at the start of the mission. I don't I do not recommend having conditions tied to an on init trigger since this is useful for setting things up like a default camera placement at the start of the map or how much supply a mission should start out with, etc. For this trigger, I'm going to be using the on tick type. Last, you'll see a box with the number 1 in it. This is very neat. This controls the repeatability of a trigger. While in my testing, you cannot use zero in this current version, to my knowledge, you can use negative one, and this will make it a repeatable trigger. Another use case is, for example, if I want to enter the number four, the trigger will run entirely four times before ending completely. To the right, we have timeline. This allows you to micromanage multiple effects and conditions within a trigger and have them play at certain times. Wait a certain amount of time before continuing with the rest of the trigger, etc. Now it's time to spawn our troopers. I'm going to select my trigger and then in the conditions and effects drop down, scroll down to unit spawn. Now, by default, the rifle troopers are selected with the blue icon on the player faction. Click the Rifle Trooper button 
otherwise known as select unit, and then use the bar on the bottom to select the unit you want to spawn in. In this case, I want the rocket squad. So I'm gonna make sure that I select Federation. I'm gonna select rocket troopers. And then just in case, I'm also going to select the blue player icon. Now, we have to pick a spawn location. Otherwise, it's going to spawn at 0, 0 all the way at uh, out of bounds. Click on the Select Location and Facing button. Now, the next time you click on the map will be the spawn location for the unit to spawn at. To set the facing, all you have to do is drag your mouse in the direction you want the units to face while you're holding down the left mouse button. And then once you're satisfied, release the mouse. You can check your work by clicking the set, the select location and facing button again to see if the location is correct. Because now you're technically getting ready to set a new location, I would not click on the map again. Instead, I would click on unit button just to make sure that you're completely deselected, at least in this current version of the editor. Now, if I were to select launch, the rocket squad should be able to land. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so we were able to successfully spawn the rocket troopers. Now, let's say we want them to wait a little bit longer before that effect actually takes off. So we're going to go ahead and head back to the editor. We're going to open that trigger back up. And then we're going to add a wait condition. And then we're going to have it wait about five seconds before the trigger will start. Now, if you are using multiple effects in here and you want to micromanage the wait times between each effect starting, all you have to do is select timeline. And then the way that this is read is wait zero seconds, then spawn effect, do something. So in this case, we could technically get rid of this condition and we can do wait five seconds, then spawn unit or do whatever action. So now let's go ahead and check out how we did. And then right on schedule, five seconds in, a squad of rocket troopers arrives just in time to take out these tiger bugs. Or to at least assist. All right. So that is how you create a trigger to spawn units, as well as a brief overview on triggers, folders, and how they all work. So next time, we're going to be talking about how to create waves of bugs or an infinite wave of bugs for you whiskey outpost enthusiasts. Thank you and see you next time.